Onglao will be taking on Renier de Ritter now and putting his one light heavyweight world title on the line. Onglao, so nice to see you. How are you doing? I'm doing well, my friend. How are you? Very good. You've got a massive change up in opponent. What's your mentality like going into this one? It doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter who they put in front of me. I'm here to fight. I'm here to put on a great show for the fans. Um, I actually found out that I'll be, you know, competing against Renier when I got to Doha, you know, in, in, the, middle of the, uh, in the middle of my flight over here. Um, it's a better matchup, in my opinion. Our first one's going to be from Jay Anderson of Kate Chai Press. So I wanted to start with, uh, you know, we spoke to Rainier yesterday and, uh, you know, he made a comment saying this isn't a rivalry for him because he doesn't believe you can beat him. And I just want to get your reaction to that, first of all. Uh, he can think what he wants, you know, it doesn't it doesn't make, make a difference. Um, I know I've made adjustments since the last bout, uh, so I know I can beat him. He's one trick pony and it's a uh, I'm, I'm a more well-rounded fighter and I know I'm going to break him and I know I'm going to put him away. How much does getting this win back mean to you in comparison to some of the other losses of your career, and in particular, uh, Vitali? Well, it means a lot. Uh, he, he's definitely showed that, you know, he, he's definitely showed that he's, uh, he's a competitor. Um, and, and, you know, l last year was a, it was a bad year for all of us. And for me to right my wrong, it's, it's very important. And last one for me, I mean, this time you're at a higher weight and I'm just curious if you think that will uh, be an advantage for you. Uh, I think so. I think I, I'll, I'll have more power. I'll have more, um, I think I'll be a little bit stronger and I, I've prepared really well for this bout. Um, and I think, you know, uh, physics, uh, the more weight, uh, the person with the more weight is going to be a little bit stronger. So I think I'll have a weight advantage on him. Our next question goes to Jason Burgos of MixedMartialArts.com. Hey there, Ang. Um, so first question is, is there like an added pressure for this? You know, losing to him a second time, if he took your uh, both of your titles would be tough for any any top athlete like yourself to, to deal with. That fact, along with everything going on back home in Myanmar, it, are those some of the major reasons you sought out recently a, a sports therapist before this fight to deal with it, the pressure of not losing to this guy again? Yeah, I didn't even know I was going to compete against him. Uh, you know, I flew out uh, from, uh, from the state thinking that I'd be fighting Big Dash and then in transit, you know, we had a change of opponents. So I'm grateful I have an opponent to, uh, this coming on Wednesday. And um, uh, is there adequate? there's always pressure. When, when you compete in front of the world, there's always pressure, you know. But uh, it's how you deal with pressure. And I think I'm going to be doing a lot better because I've been working with a sports psychologist. Um, and then, you know, the thing that's going on in Myanmar, it's, uh, it, it hasn't, you know, it hasn't gotten any better. So, um Hopefully, I can, I can uh, you know, uh, shine a little light on them and I can uh, make them proud uh, and, and make the people in Myanmar happy. Is getting uh, this, like, just surprised opponent change, like, just less than a week's notice, is it almost in a, in a way like a gift? Because I have no doubt you wanted badly to get this rematch after the last fight, or no matter what, you know, getting a fight on such short notice, less than a week at a championship level, that's really just hard to deal with. Yeah, like... Uh, uh, if uh, Renier, you know, R Renier was supposed to fight on the same card as well, and his opponent dropped out. Um, and I'm sure he's happy that he has an opponent, and I, I am as well, uh, because at the end of the day, we are professional fighters, and we do need to get paid. Um, so that being said, you know, am I happy? I'm very happy with the new opponent. Um, I'm here to prove myself, no one else. And I think uh, this, is a, this is a good way to prove myself. One last question. When I talked to you before the first fight, you had a lot of confidence you could deal with his grappling, um, you know, mentioning all the black belts you work at at Sanford. But things, you know, went differently on fight night. Did he gain your respect in new ways from getting the submission on you? Or do you look at that fight as I just made technical mistakes or maybe on some level where you maybe even underestimating him? Well, I, I don't really underestimate him. I mean, I didn't underestimate him. Um and, and because of that, I've made a lot of adjustments in training. You know, I've, uh, I, I've worked a lot. You know, I don't know if he has made the adjustments because it's kind of hard for him to make the adjustments. But uh, you'll see, you'll definitely see a different and a more exciting fight this round.
I mean, this time around. Our next question will go to Leon Jennings of Asian Persuasion MMA. Leon, please go ahead. Um, I spoke to Rene a couple of days ago. He said he's expecting a tougher matchup. He thinks you're going to have a different approach. Can you tell us a little bit more about your approach going into this one compared to the last one? Uh, you're going to have to wait and see, but it's going to be good. It's going to be exciting. And I, I promise uh, somebody's going to be face down on the floor. Although obviously you've been preparing for Vitali, have you also been sort of preparing for him in, in the back of your mind as well? The fact that even getting through Vitali, you're probably going to face him maybe next. Honestly, I'm preparing to be the best version of myself. And the best version of myself is a bad, bad matchup for everybody in the world. Cool. Lastly, you kind of touched on this already, but how important is it for you to make a statement to give your fellow countrymen something positive to talk about and, and to maybe highlight what's going on in Myanmar? Yeah, it's it's like it's very important right now uh, with what's going on. It's it's really dark times. Like, it, it's 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 hard for me to explain right now. Uh, but read it in the news and you'll understand. Like, it's uh, we're going back in the dark ages, and I, I don't want to you know I don't want to dwell too much into it because I'm not a politician myself. Uh, but uh, read up on it, uh, and, and you'll see you know what's going on in Myanmar. And I want to I want to um, somehow you know make them feel that they're not alone and uh, that I'm. Uh, that I'm thinking of them and my performance would somehow make them a little bit happier with what's going on right now. Next question goes to Nick Atkin of South China Morning Post. Yeah, I just wanted to get your thoughts on, did, did it ever cross your mind, wait, I should possibly not take this fight, you know, it's short notice and I want to prepare more for Rainier, or did that not enter your mind? No, of course not. I signed it. I signed the contract as soon as it got there. Within like, a, as soon as I saw it, I signed it. So. Do you prefer this fight? Is, is it, you kind of smile? there was this something you wanted to, to do more than fight Vitali in the trilogy yeah I mean both both fights are exciting you know both matchups are exciting I want I want to compete with uh, I want to compete and and give the fans a uh, great great uh, uh, great fights for you know however many years I'm gonna have my career you know this is uh I know I'm at the I'm getting in my prime and I'm, I'm getting in, in, the, in the best like version of myself and I want to give the fans exciting fights and both of them you know will come and uh, put on an exciting matchup so I'm just excited yeah he, he seems very confident again and he says there's nothing he thinks there's nothing you could do to stop the same result uh, do you think he's being overconfident there and you you think you're prepared to uh, make it go a different way yeah I mean you can't say there's nothing I can't do no I can break his face <laughs> yeah that's true um uh, just lastly for me, uh, would you also like to do this fight with Big Dash um, down the line again? Sure. You know, if he's uh, if he's able to, uh, I hope he, he uh, recovers, you know, from the coronavirus and uh, and he's healthy again, you know, then uh, we'll make for a good matchup as well. Next question goes to Sergio Pinero of Fighter Path. Sergio, you're up. You faced three people or you faced three undefeated fighters in your one um, FC career. How is there extra satisfaction getting it done against someone who has that O next to their name? Uh, yeah, definitely. It really uh, brings out who they are as a mixed martial artist and a fighter. Um, some people, when they lose their O, they break and they, you know, they go down. Um, so, so it, it's good. You know, it's you, 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 O for for a reason. You know, you O. Um, because maybe you haven't fought the, uh, I don't know. It's just, it, it, it's, uh, to me, it doesn't matter. I don't, I don't feel that satisfaction in, in taking the, oh, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter, but, but, but uh, it, it doesn't, it doesn't make a difference to me. And then uh, one last one for me here. Uh, some of the greatest rivalries in MMA end up going on to become trilogies. Obviously there are two belts across two weight classes between the two of you. Do you feel like you guys could go beyond that and maybe fight four or five several times uh, defending one, in, one another's belts? Well, every time I do a rematch, I always try to uh, put an emphasis and I always try to uh, make it known that, you know, they, they, they second guess signing the dotted line. So um, after this fight, I plan on doing the same, making second guess signing the dotted line. Our next question is from BBC Burmese. BBC Burmese, please go ahead. You can imagine and you know, Myanmar people will be eagerly expecting and waiting for your trump as some positive news in these dark times. They desperately need under this current situation. Does it make to you strange 
or pressure? Well, initially it was a lot of pressure, you know, especially with what's going on and what people were saying. Um, but I, I, I'm trying to use it as a strength and I'm trying to um, give them some positivity during these dark times. And uh, for me, it's, uh, I just wanna, I just wanna be a, a positive light for them. Last minute chain and opening, does it affect to your game plan and strategy? If I'm trying to be the best in the world, if I'm truly trying to be the best in the world, it doesn't matter who I fight against. It doesn't matter who I compete against. Um, I should be a bad matchup for anybody in the world. So it doesn't matter. For, for the exact game plan and strategy, it's, uh, because uh, how confident are you in now to fight against someone who captured, who captured the middleweight title from you with first round submission? How confident I am? I'm confident in my training. You know, I'm confident in my... In my team, I'm, I'm confident that they've prepared me well. Uh, I, like, I don't have a doubt that I can finish him, and I, I don't have a doubt that I can, uh, uh, I can put on a, a great performance against him. Our next question will go to Jack Gottsell of Topsoft Sports. Jack, uh, already having an immediate rematch under your belt versus uh, Big Dash, does that experience help you in a, a fight versus uh, Ritter, where it's also another uh, immediate rematch? They're two different fighters, so. It, it, not really, but that being said, you know, we prepare in, in every aspect. And, uh, and, and after my last bout, I, I've been uh, working a lot on my, uh, my deficit. So it, it should be a good, it should make for a good, exciting matchup. Um, and I like that Renier is very confident, you know, saying that he's gonna take everything from me. So I, I like that, you know, and, and that should make for a good matchup. Thank you. And uh, do you believe the short notice will affect your ability to game plan enough to overcome Ritter this time around? Or is that something uh, you knew would happen one day, this, this rematch? I, I knew it was going to happen. Uh, this rematch was going to happen. But uh, I, I thought I was going to get through, you know, a few more people. But it, it's okay. It, it doesn't, like, l like I said, you know, earlier, um, at Sanford MMA, we train to be the best. We, we train, you know, all aspects of MMA. We train to be a band matchup for everyone. So uh, we got great trainers. We got great teammates. Um, so, so I'm just excited that I, I get a chance to redeem myself from last year. Next question will be from Christian De Santiago of MMA Island. Gotcha. I know you're fishing for a big win uh, this week, uh, but. You know, with the American primetime, a lot of your American fans and friends are going to be able to watch this at a good time. So, like, uh, you know, there's a lot of casual fans that are now able to watch this event with it not being so late. So what message do you want to send to the American audience? Um, you know, I'm going to put on a great show. Uh, it's going to be exciting. The whole card's going to be exciting. Uh, but uh, don't blink. This one's going to end with a bang. Next question goes to Faris of Singapore Strike Sports. Faris, please go ahead. Follow up to the previous question that you'll be live on TNT and some of the fans uh, might not know who you are. Um, what do you like to say to the fans and describe uh, in a sentence who you are and uh, what makes you the best fighter? In the division, uh, fans, I th there's not much to say. I'm gonna do uh, let, let my hands do the talking. I'm gonna let my fists do the talking. Uh, but you guys are in for a treat. Uh, U.S. prime time. Uh, if you've never seen one championship, you're, you're in for a big treat. Mm -hmm. We'll be fighting in the morning. Does that affect you in any way? No, I spar in the morning, so it's even better for me. You know, we do a lot of our hard, hard training in the morning, so it's perfect. Our next question goes to Tom Taylor of Bleacher Report. Tom, please go ahead. Obviously, uh, Rainier is known for his ground game. Um, I know you spent a lot of time since the first fight working on your ground game at Sanford MMA. Are there any guys in particular that have been really valuable training partners as you get ready for this rematch? Uh, yeah, uh, I would say, uh, you know, Gilbert's been there helping us out. Um, we have, you know, Brendan Allen, who just competed, you know, a couple of days ago in the UFC. Uh, that was there, you know, we have uh, a lot of great jujitsu guys. Uh, Wagner Roach has been helping me out a lot. Uh, I've been doing a lot of just straight jujitsu rolls at, at his gym. Uh, and we have Linton Bissell, uh, Steve Maury, uh, built, built much bigger than Renner. 
now. So they've been helping me out a lot. Uh, Greg Jones been helping me out with the wrestling part, you know, and Nate Malcourt is here with me. Um, so the list goes on. Like I said, you know, we're, we're trying to be a better version of ourselves. We're trying to be a bad matchup for anybody in the world. So, uh, and, and my, 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 my focus, you know, the last few months have been a lot on the jujitsu part. So after all that preparation, how ready do you feel to, to grapple with him if the fight hits the mat again? I'm 100% ready you know, for, for anything. Uh, like I said, you know, I've been, uh, uh, we've been trying to become a better, you know, mixed martial artist as a whole. And uh, of course, there's holes in everybody's game. But that being said, you know, uh, I know he has a lot of holes as well. So it's going to be good. Mm -hmm. Um, you mentioned a moment ago that you you can break his face. We all know that, but should he be worried about your ground game at all in this matchup? Uh, there, there are things that we'll, we'll do, you know, adjustments that we made, and uh, he's going to have some difficulties, in my opinion, in those uh, ground sequences. Our next question goes to Jude Briosis of Overtime Heroics MMA. Considering the circumstances, your opponent, your age, storyline coming into this fight, would you say that this fight is the most crucial of your career? I guess, man, you're only as good as your last fight, you know? Everybody thought I was the man until my last fight, so it is what it is. Uh, every, every fight is so crucial. Every fight is so important. Um, you only fight a few times in a year or so, but, but, but we train, you know, we train six days a week, twice a day, you know? So, so it's so crucial for me to put everything together in one night, you know, one, 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 one day for, for us, for this one. Uh, there has been recent problems in your home country, Myanmar, which you were so vocal about. Did that ever become a distraction to your preparation? Like, how much of an effect was it to your camp? It's depressing, you know, especially in the beginning of February. Uh, a lot of, you know, fingers were pointed towards me for not speaking out. Um, and it's not that I didn't want to speak out. It was, uh, it was just a hard time for me. Um, and... It still is, you know, the situation isn't better. Not the, the world is not doing anything about it. The United Nations not doing anything about it. Uh, so so it is it is hard, it is depressing. And it's hard for me not to think about it because it's affecting my friends and my family members, you know, in Myanmar as well. Um, with that being said, you know, I, 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 I would allocate time to it during the day and then focus on what I had to do, the task at hand, which is get ready for this big, big, big uh, competition, you know. But, but the fight that I'm doing in the, in, in the circle, in the one championship circle, is nothing compared to the fight that the people are going through in Myanmar. Our next question goes to Chris Mancuso of Tarp Off Sports. Chris, please go ahead. Um, I wanted to ask you, I know you're training out of Sanford MMA. Has it meant a lot to get, uh, you're going to have a couple of appearances on TNT for, you know, blasting the one championship uh, into the United States and into North America. I mean, to be a part of that must feel pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. It's about time. huh? It's about time. We have some showing. Uh, yeah. Prime time. Uh, of course it's, it's super cool. You know, I've, uh, this year would be, uh, I would have spent half of my life, you know, in, in the United States, uh, my in-laws, my friends, uh, you know, the, the local American audience will, will know, you know, uh, me a little bit better, a little bit, uh, will be able to watch my, my, my work. So it is, it is very important for me. And lastly, I wanted to ask you, you know, Kamara Usman leaves the gym. You're the, you're the champ at the gym. Now, have you felt any like uh, added leadership pressure or anything like that around the Sanford MMA gym? I mean, some, you're going to be someone that the rest of the guys lean on heavily as well in between these fights. Man, the bond in the Sanford MMA is so tight, man. We have a tight knit bond. Uh, we, we have a great group of men that work together and build each other up. So not, not so much leadership because everybody's there. You know, you have the veterans like Vitor, Robbie, Nate. Uh, man, I could, I could keep going on, you know. And, and our trainers like Henry Hoof, uh, Greg Jones, uh, Kami, uh, Corey Peacock. Like, these guys are amazing, man. We keep each other accountable. Um, uh, we have really close, tight-knit group of guys that work hard, train hard. 
and at the same time we're, we're positive energy to each other you know so it's uh, there's no edit pressure at all you know with Kamaru leaving Kamaru you know left on his terms um, and he's doing well and we're happy for him you know we're not no one is like angry that he's he left no one's you know unhappy that you know he's gone we're happy for him he choose to you know he choose to go his own way and that's fine we we had great times together so we'll cherish those moments and uh and, and as for me there's no added pressure the, the sanford group is an amazing group of guys the next one's going to go to dylan bowker of my mma news dylan please go ahead i'm doing well thanks i was just curious because i was you know talking to rory mcdonald about you know his adaptation with having to do an opponent switch short notice on his own right a sanford mma teammate there i'm kind of curious what facets of the Sanford MMA gym culture breed that confidence to make rapid adjustments like that. Like like every day we train mixed martial arts. You know we train mixed martial arts, uh, so the change in the opponent doesn't really affect us. You you can you can just go down the list of guys in our gym, and you will see guys that are really strong in their striking, guys that are really strong in their jujitsu, guys that are really strong in their wrestling, and we train with each and every one of them every day. You know. So for us to make the adjustment, it, it's it's not hard. You know, we don't train like like we don't bring in we don't bring in a kickboxer when we fight a kickboxer. We don't bring in somebody you know uh, out of our camp to fight a, a body type or, or a style type. You know, so like like Rory is one of the best best mixed martial arts artists as far as the transition go. You know, when he mixes up his striking, his wrestling. And his jujitsu, he's a problem for anybody. So as far as the adjustments go, it, it doesn't matter. You know, we have great guys in our team, and, um, and and the energy is amazing. So it doesn't matter who we fight. Like I said, uh, at my peak, at my prime, I, I'm gonna be a bad matchup for anyone. Uh, you know, at any at, at uh, either middleweight or light heavyweight. Man, I'm kind of curious if you get the ideal outcome here. This is a bit of a hypothetical, but would you have preference between maybe say a Deritter trilogy for the middleweight belt or would a big dash trilogy take preference kind of just closing the book on that saga? Well, it doesn't matter. I'm going to compete, you know, uh, two or three more times this year. So uh, I want everybody.